Yo squad, checking in with you. It's the exam coach coming in with another WhatsApp bulletin. I sent one out last week. A lot of you got back to me and said, this is cracking. We want more of this. So I'm giving you more and cutting down on the on the uh, usual worded bulletin. I might sprinkle a few of them in the future, but we'll see how these voice notes go. See if more of you get back to me this time and say, hey, that was also cracking. Keep cracking on and I'll keep doing it. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. So in the last one, I gave you three things to focus on during the holidays. In this one, I want to give you three things to focus on when you're actually taking exams. So when the exams hit, what three things do you need to be thinking about doing, getting in order to make sure that you're going to be able to perform your best? Quick heads up before we get into it. The seven day exam plan is still available. You get daily WhatsApp messages to keep you on track, keep you motivated, keep you positive, keep you in control of your stress levels and performing the best revision techniques to make sure you're prepped and ready for your exams. So check it out before this Friday. This Friday, it closes down and it no longer be available. We've only got a limited amount of plans available. So get on it if you want something to really help you out this exam season. Okay, let's kick it off. Number one, exam season It's a marathon, right? It's not a sprint. Sounds cliched, but the point has to be made. But let me dig into it a little bit deeper and add a bit more color for you. So exams are going to be draining, right? They're they're mentally and physically to a certain extent draining. A lot of you are doing a lot of exams. I'm talking, you know, up to up to 30 exams, two hours each. That is a long period of time to be focusing across whoever you are and that that's a challenge and they're meant to be challenging and they're meant to be stretching and it is tough but the way that we can overcome that is by changing the way we view it and approach it and also changing what we do right putting in some systems that help us make it a little bit easier so a few recommendations i'd make is see the whole thing as if it were a marathon sports event. So for a marathon sports event, in fact, the London Marathon's coming up soon, isn't it? So perfect case in point. You can see that a week out, the runners will be really focusing on their sleep, their diet, and obviously their training as well that they're doing for the marathon. Um, but everything, you know, keeping everything in balance. And that's really how you got to view the whole of exam season, focusing on getting the right amount of sleep per night, getting your diet right. You've got to stay healthy for exams. If you're ill for an exam, it's really, really tough to concentrate. If anybody's trying to work when when you're sick or um, just not feeling well, it's tough and your brain won't be able to operate at the level it's actually capable of. So keeping yourself healthy, just balanced diet, you know, fruit, veg, all the normal things that we're told, you should be consciously paying attention to that during exam season. Because I don't care how much revision you do, if you're not good on the day, then you're not going to be able to, to, to perform your best. It's as simple as that. And the way you keep it, you know, checks and balances with these things and, and uh, making sure you're exercising as well, getting outside, keeping the stress low, doing that a couple of times a day, short blasts, is by obviously building that routine. It's a point I went back to in the last one. Routine is crucial because it gives you the structure. It gives you the bird's eye view of what you need to do and when you need to do it. And it takes the pressure off to a certain extent because you've got a clear set of tasks you need to do. And the other thing is in a marathon, people don't just you know peg it from the, from the first gun or go sign and start sprinting. They jog it out, right? They, they pace make. That's how you run a marathon. So my advice to you is don't get all amped up about the first three exams. Don't, you know, ridiculously over index on how much re- revision you do for those first three exams that you have and then discount all the rest and do poorly in all the rest of them. Yeah, you'll have a great start, but you won't finish strong. In the same vein, Don't pull an all-nighter before your first three exams because you're stressed, anxious, want to do really well in them. You've got to go in there with a balanced mindset of, okay, let me get my right amount of sleep. Let me treat this as if it's just any normal exam, not the first one that I'm going to get really pumped up and amped up for. Just cruise into it, treat it, 
normally not a, not like the sprint or a beginning of a race and that's the kind of mentality you want to have okay so prepare for the marathon treat it like one remember it's a long term thing these exams even though they do come within a fairly short blast of time be it 2 3 weeks number 2 be in control of your thoughts and emotions so what if you have a bad exam this will definitely happen everybody's going to have a bad exam everybody's going to think they had a bad exam too i'm going to give you a quick thing that you can use right now to try and get rid of those negative thoughts about past exams that you really can't do anything about right it makes sense you can't change it so you might as well forget about it because all it's going to do is have a negative impact on your next exam if you dwell too much on your past performance that you just can't change so if you want to close your eyes right now yep close your eyes whatever you're doing just close your eyes and i'm just going to talk you through a quick visualization exercise so imagine a blank piece of paper in your head pick up a pen yep this is an imaginary world just pick up a pen you've got one in your hand right now it's black ink and begin to draw a tiny dot in the middle of that blank piece of paper and slowly make the dot bigger and bigger and bigger the black ink is spreading across the page and soon you've got quite a large black dot in the middle of this piece of paper and within the black dot you begin to pour all of the negative emotion from the previous exam or we could do it in this instance from today or this week so far pour all of the negative things all of the things you are worried about concerned about feel as if they didn't go too well and you could have done better pour them into that hole and keep making the hole bigger and bigger and bigger and, and you can see it swirling around now it looks a bit like a, a black hole if you've ever seen one of them in space it's just a big black kind of mass of swirly stuff that destroys everything in its path and, and that's what you've got on your on your paper at the moment it's it's a big black it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as it swells with all these negative emotions negative concerns and worries that you have about past things that you've done and remember you're going to apply this to your exams when you're in exam season so make that dot nice and big keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger okay nice and big sweet now scrunch up the paper scrunch it up into a tiny ball like you would when you're trying to hit three pointers in physics or chemistry when you're trying to ping stuff in the bin from yards out and you never do i could never manage that sometimes got the over the back of the head ones but never really need to need to shape up my techers on that okay you got that scrunched up in a ball nice it's now in your right hand you've got it in your right hand right now now step forward and lob it over your left shoulder right hand over your left shoulder nice okay you've lobbed it away and those are all the negative thoughts emotions worries concerned concerns gone they're over your shoulder see you later in the past and you walk away from that now what we've just done is a visualization technique which a lot of sports people a lot of performers will use sports people and performers visualize what they're going to do before they before it happens classic example of that tiger woods is all over the media at the moment because he won the masters on the weekend he will have routines where he in fact you can see it on youtube he talks about it he visualizes his shots before he hits them he knows how he's going to shape the ball into the green he visualizes his putts going into the hole when he hits a poor stroke he definitely has some kind of routine he does where for example he takes 10 steps after the shot and after he's taken those 10 steps he completely forgets about the last shot he plays and he just focuses on the next one. The same thing will happen with artists and performers. You think of, you know, person who springs to mind, Ariana Grande on the stage. She absolutely kills it when she's on stage. But there is definitely practice, visualization, and we can see she does it, right? There's a dress rehearsal. She's seeing things in her mind. How's it going to play out? She's vis visualizing where, where are the, you know, what's the choreography going to look like? Where am I going to walk on the stage? What's the crowd sound going to be like? She prepares herself before she actually physically goes and does it. And that's what you've got to start doing with your exams. It's the same mentality. And it probably ma it makes sense, right? Just to do it. Think it through. 
before you do it and also have a technique for afterwards to to forget all the bad stuff all the negative stuff that's going just going to weigh you down and not allow you to press on look forward and execute another top performance in the next next exam and number three systemize how you do exams as much as possible so for example how many times are you going to read the question what types of words are you going to highlight within the question what order are you going to answer the questions on each paper? Do you have that down? How many times are you going to look up from your paper during the exam? If the answer to the question doesn't spring to mind at first, what are you going to do? What's your process for bringing yourself back on track and trying to scramble a few marks? You've got to have all these systems and processes down. Make them for yourself. If you want a way of doing them, use a seven-day exam plan. And if you want a way of actually staying accountable to it, remembering it and executing it every single day, get on it because that's the WhatsApp support piece. That idea of every single day reminding you of the basics, what you need to do, how you need to do it. And it will go in because, yeah, we all know we hear great information every so often, but we don't do it because other stuff just gets in the way. But that's what the WhatsApp support is all about. It's constant and it actually creates action, which is what matters at the end of the day. And the reason why you got to focus on systems is because systems make things work. They make things foolproof, right? I bet you you've been acute. I used to get this all the whole time. Teachers would say, hey, you're careless. You're making careless errors in maths. I just wouldn't read the question right. And, and I wouldn't stand a chance of getting the answer right because I didn't read the question right. And I actually knew what to do. I just hadn't done the easy bit right, which was actually read the question, understand what it's asking you, highlight the words so that you don't forget what it's asking you. Weird things happen in exams and when you're under pressure, you read things wrong, you forget things, you forget obvious things that two minutes ago you told yourself to pay attention to and you forget it midway through the essay and the essay has gone completely the wrong way. That kind of thing. Having a process there and a system will help you stay on track and remain error free. You want an example of this? What's, what's the biggest fast food, fast food restaurant in the world? Okay, you probably a few things have probably popped to mind, but I bet you one of them, probably McDonald's, right? And there's a reason for that. It's a huge brand. But why has it been able to scale to the, to the extent it has? It's because it's got a phenomenal system in place. The system it uses is something called the Speedy System. It was invented uh, in 1948 by the McDonald's brothers, the two dudes who made the McDonald's chain. And the Speedy System is all about how do you deliver a hamburger to someone in 30 seconds instead of 30 minutes. And it's a system that requires the kitchen to be set up in a very specific way, and they still use it now. If you've ever been to McDonald's, you see how all these people who don't know each other, who are usually young students and perhaps haven't spent that much time in a job, but can do the task of the speedy system. They can do their individual tasks and roles, and they can produce food at a very, very fast rate. It's because there's a very strict system in place. You watch all of them. Next time you go to McDonald's, watch them. They are all doing one specific t task. You've got one person on the chips, one person on the burger, one person on the counter, one person on the drinks. And they're all just doing one thing, and they know exactly where to put things. They know their process. They know who they got to talk to. They know what bus button they got to press. And it's a clockwork system. It just works. And that's how you got to have your exams laid out. You've got to get systems in place so you know what to do each step of the exam. And the other thing about that that just makes it really valuable to you is it takes away the stress and the pressure and the anxiety you feel because it's like having a game plan, right? If you've got no game plan going into a game, you don't know what's going to happen. You feel nervous. You don't know how you're going to win because you've got nothing that you can actually try and track to in order to achieve the winning result. Whereas if you've got tactics and systems and you're like okay i've got to do this for this question i've got to make sure i read each question this many times that's my process i've got to make sure i highlight the question words that are relevant to me getting the answer right i've got to make sure that i leave five minutes at the end of every paper to check through my answers because i know i might make careless errors and i want to correct those i know that i need to look up at the clock this many times to make sure i'm on track so I don't, you know, just have my head down the whole exam and then the exam finishes. And if you have those systems in place, it's going to be very, very easy for you to create consistent exam performance. What's more, consistently high exam performance. So I hope this was useful. God, I've gone on a bit, haven't I? Um, but yeah, let me know. Get back to me, in fact. Like, ping me a little message. Just say thumbs up or, hey, this was cracking or, you know, 
this was this was a shocker. Don't do it again. Um, but I hope it was good. Anyway, um, usually students like this stuff, and guys, it does work. Like, I've been doing this a while now, and if you have systems in place, you do achieve better results. It's as simple as that. So to wrap up, if you want to really take your exams to the, to the next level this year, using the exam coach systems, using what I've made with students who have performed really well and students who have performed poorly and understanding what actually creates those two outcomes, get on the seven-day exam plan. Again, it's seven days of exactly what you need to do for your exams, the blueprint, and then every day, WhatsApp support, reinforcing the key things, reminding you every day, giving you that motivation, giving you that little nudge, that kick that everyone needs because Yeah, there are so many distractions out there. Yeah, technology makes it really easy for us to take the easy path and not work, get distracted, watch something cool and interesting. Why? Because it is cool and interesting. But the point I made earlier in the other podcast or the voice note I did was it's quite addictive, this stuff, and it's set up in a way to tap into the way we work as human beings to keep us on it. And it's very tough to, to break away from it. It's something that we all have to to try and overcome and and come up with our own systems and ways and routines of doing that. And mindsets, mindsets a key thing. If you're good in your head and you know what you're trying to do and why, uh, and and you know the pitfalls and the things that could go wrong, it's very easy to carve a path through that to success in whatever area, be it exams or just something you're passionate about in your life. Okay, I'm checking out. I hope this was a cracker. Again, remember, get back to me and... Just keep going, guys, with your exams. Like, honestly, keep pressing on. Don't give up. Don't throw the towel in. Be persistent. You look at anyone who who you look up to, whether it be a rapper, whether it be a, a, a leader of a business, whether it be a sports person, one of the key messages, I don't care who you are, what they say is persevere. Do not give up. Keep going. And, and look for the positives. Always look for the positives. Crack on. I'm checking out.